or you're kind of breaking down barriers and separating people. If you have girls playing on the esports team, you have boys, you have people from different backgrounds, genders, identities, uh, races, all playing together because it's there's no limiting factor. I'm curious, you've had a lot of partners and you partner with a lot of people. Um, if, if I were to ask them, what would they say is the most encouraging thing about students that are participating that they find? I don't want to sound like broken record, but it's, it's engagement. It's that sense of belonging. It's that you know, identity of connecting with, uh, with friends. And, and more importantly, just keeping it in the classroom makes a big impact. It, it associates their positivity and excitement of something that they love with school, which, you know, be honest, like not every kid loves school. Uh, so this is a great kind of positive affirmation for, for school to have this association by offering esports and, and opening it up to, to kids and we've seen programs start with three four kids just wanting to have a video game club or an esports club they find out about us they you know you know try to they show it to the teacher they show the organization the structure the opportunity uh the teachers has no idea what they're looking at but they see these excited kids that are motivated to do something so they enable them you know they they sign up with us they compete within a year two years three years you know we've been doing this since 2012 we see programs skyrocket to 250 kids, you know, at a single school. Wow, that's and awesome. You're looking at like five, 10 percent of the entire student body population wanting to be a part of this club, and they find different roles. They're not just competing. You have the the social media manager who's doing and learning practical career skills and marketing and building their social following. You have the broadcasters, the shoutcasters, the the IT support. And so you kind of find this whole ecosystem of support for the esports clubs as they start to grow and scale, where you have your stars, you know, the the you know the players themselves that are the talent and everyone's kind of rallying behind them, but then you're kind of building the support infrastructure around them. Just like you have in high school football, you have like a video club come out and you know, video you know, video right. everything. But in this case, it's usually they're a part of the club at some capacity which is really exciting. You had kind of the your your kid that was kind of shy, you know, introvert, kind of expressed that he was an introvert. You have this, you know, kind of the, the stereotypical, you know, jock baseball player and they're best buds because of the esports program. And you're you're kind of breaking down barriers and separating people. You have girls playing on the esports team, you have boys, you have people from different backgrounds, genders, identities, uh, races, all playing together because it's there's no limiting factor. You know, even there's so many accommodations for people with disabilities as well at uh, esports so it's truly the most accessible opportunity for competitive sports for, for so many different people we work with the foundation for them to subsidize and or grant uh, reduced fees so for our tournament fees and or license fee can be significantly reduced based on that school being title one or uh, free and reduced lunch um, this is kind of the primary focus so those schools can qualify but I, I would highly encourage any school to reach out to the foundation and, and see if they are able to receive support